Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownload Blog. Today we're taking a look at the very new shiny iPhone 16, 16 Plus, 16 Pro, and 16 Pro Max. No matter which phone that you got, these tips will still work for you. And I'll make sure to mention whenever one of the devices is different. We'll break up this video into hardware, software, and then tips and tricks and accessories. Starting out with the packaging, it's very simple and Apple has been getting simpler and simpler every year. Whether it's for environmental reasons or for money reasons, it's always a little bit of both, I think. But inside of this, you don't get any plastic wrap, just the phone with a cover on top. And underneath that, really all you get is a USB-C to USB-C braided cable. It does have a nice texture, it's a nice cable, but you get nothing else. No earphones, no wall charger, not even Apple stickers, so it's very simple. And then the hardware will depend a little bit on which model you got, but the basic hardware remains the same for all these devices. On the right hand side, you have your power button, which also doubles as Siri if you hold that down. Then you have your new camera control button, which if you click once, takes you right into the camera, and we'll get into that later. On the left hand side, you have your volume up and your volume down, as well as the action button, which we've seen for the past couple years, and this has made its way to the non-pro versions of the iPhone as well. So that's nice to see for every new device this year. And then at the bottom, another year of USB-C on all the iPhones, which means that you cannot use your lightning charger with this anymore. You will have to use the USB-C cable, whether the one that Apple provided or your own. And this is the same one that can charge your iPad Pro, new AirPods, such as the AirPods 4, and I'll have a video covering that soon. Uh, or your iPad, your Mac, pretty much every new device now from Apple supports USB-C. So the good news is that you can use that to charge all your devices. If you have the iPhone 16 Pro or Pro Max, you will have an always on display, but no matter what, you can always tap your screen and it will wake it up. Navigation has been the same as the last few years for all the iPhones without a home button. So like I just showed you to get home, you swipe up, you can swipe left and right to get back and forth between applications just like this. And then up to see all your recent apps. You can slide up multiple apps at once if you want to quit them. So you can do up to three at once. Down from the top right to get into control center. Down from the middle to get into notification settings. And you can swipe down to get into your quick search settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware. So there's the new camera control button, which of course is a very big deal. So basically pressing it once launches your camera. Now there's lots of other ways of getting into the camera on your iPhone including this little button down here, or simply sliding over to the left will also open up your camera. But now you have a third option, so simply clicking this will get you into your camera. If you click again, it'll snap a photo, or if you hold, it'll start a video. Same thing will happen if you are in landscape mode, so do a landscape photo or a landscape video by holding the phone sideways. Now what you can also do is put a little bit of pressure on it without fully clicking it, and that will bring up different options at the very top. So by default, it gives you different lens options. Depending on which phone you have, you'll have different lens options which you can switch between just by sliding your finger across. But if you double tap lightly, you can actually switch which setting you wanna change. So from styles, to tone, to zoom, to exposure, to depth of field if you're in portrait mode. And depending on the phone and what setting you're in, you will see different options. So let's do zoom, do another half click, and I can slide left or right to zoom in or out, and then double click to go back into the settings. So it's probably not game changing for most people, but it is a nice feature to have nonetheless to take photos with. So now there's several options if you want to actually take a photo. You can use the volume button, up or down, or the new camera control button. Okay, next I wanna get into the USB-C port. Now, while it might be frustrating for some people who can no longer charge with their old cable, it actually comes with a ton of cool features. One of my favorite is just the fact that you can actually plug in small devices and charge them from your iPhone. So here I have an Apple Watch charger, and you can charge an Apple Watch, of course, but you can also charge your AirPods. So you can see just like that, I'm now charging my AirPods from my iPhone, which is really, really handy. Now you can't charge any devices that are bigger than the iPhone, so you can't use it to charge your iPad or a computer or something like that. Those would actually be charging your iPhone. But if you have an iPad, you can charge your iPhone from your iPad with USB-C as well. You can also connect really nice accessories such as this you know, USB-C to SD card. 
adapter, or you can connect your phone directly to certain microphones and USB-C hubs and so much more. It really is a super handy uh, feature to have USB-C uh, and there's basically no limit. And if you get the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max, it also does have a faster USB-C port for connecting and transferring things more quickly. If you have the regular 16 or 16 plus, it won't be as quick, but you can still connect to pretty much all the same things that you would want to. Now in terms of charging, like I said, you can use the USB-C cable, which is a great option, but because of the magnets on the back of your iPhone, there's actually so many great ways of charging your iPhone that I generally don't ever plug in my phone, and I just use different MagSafe chargers. Now my favorite ones that I've used are from ESR, and they are the sponsor of this episode, and they have several great MagSafe accessories for your iPhone. The first is the ESR Qi 2 MagSafe battery pack with kickstand, which you're seeing right here. Now this of course has a kickstand, so you can keep your phone propped up no matter what, which is a really handy feature. It's only 15.5 millimeters thick or about 0.6 inches, so it's really not that bulky. And it has an AI algorithm inside it that actually keeps the charger 33 degrees cooler than the charging standard requires. With 15 watt charging in this, you can juice up your iPhone 16 Pro to 84% in about two and a half hours, whereas a 7.5 watt charger would take three hours to get 77%. This is a perfect little magnetic charger to carry around with you wherever you go. You can keep it in a pocket or a bag. And then whenever you need a quick charge, you put it on the back of your phone. And then when you need to charge this, it uses the same USB-C port. So you can charge the charger and your iPhone with one cable at the same time. Now there's also the great three-in-one MagSafe charger with Qi 2 and CryoBoost. Now this is patented CryoBoost technology that keeps your iPhone and charger running cooler with fans in the back. This also has a detachable Apple certified Apple Watch charger that can charge your watch to 100% in 100 minutes, which is much faster than any other brands with their 2.5 watt chargers. And it gives you all of this for a very competitive price. This is on my desk. I use it every day for charging my iPhone, my Apple Watch, and my AirPods. It's great. ESR also makes a MagSafe car charger with Qi 2 and Cryo Boost that has the same cooling technology, full speed charging, and the strongest magnets on the market. So if you're looking for a great magnetic MagSafe charger. ESR is the number one brand of MagSafe accessories. And I'll leave links down below. Now the action button on the left hand side is very nice and it's not new, but you can customize it to really do whatever you want. So if you go into your settings and you go under action button, there you can choose what happens when you hold it. Now you can really customize this if you have a shortcut. You can do a lot of more complex things, such as call specific people or perform certain actions on your phone. You could have it you know, open your garage or whatever, and you do that just by holding. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, let's just say clock, start timer. So now, when I hold this, it's going to start a timer. I also really like this for focus modes, and you can choose one in particular or all the options to pop up. That way, if you're in a meeting or something and you feel your phone vibrate and you wanna put it on do not disturb mode, but you don't want to pull out your phone, you can simply hold that button and it will turn on Do Not Disturb, which is really handy. Now by default, it's going to be silent mode, so turning your ringer on or off. But if you're like me, you don't really change it that often, and so you might want to customize it to something else. Now let's take a look at Control Center. So if you swipe down from the top right-hand corner of your device, you now have the ability to customize your quick controls in here. So if you tap and hold, you can click add a control and there's tons of different options you can add here to really customize any quick control that you want on your device. And for the first time you can have multiple pages so you can add more that go beyond just this page for any quick controls that you might need. Now in terms of customizing your home screen, you do get more options this year. So if you tap and hold, the first thing you can do is add or remove pages. So you can customize pages depending on certain times of the day or what you want. And you can add a new one or choose which ones are on or off. So I'm gonna choose this one, okay. So I'm gonna tap and hold again and click edit. And here you have a few options. So if you click customize, you now have the ability to make icons larger, which will remove the labels underneath, which just have a little bit of a cleaner experience overall, especially if you know pretty well which apps are which. You can also do a new tinted mode, which will just put a tint over all of your applications. This is a little bit wonky, might not look perfect for everything. I tend to turn this off. And then you have night mode be automatic. So dark or light, depending on the time of the day and the brightness around you. And then finally, if you click this little toggle here, it'll just dim the background without touching any of the apps. 
And then if you add widget, you have all these options to add different widgets to your home screen. Now in your lock screen, you also have customization options. So if you tap and hold, you can click customize and you can click lock screen. You can now change out which icons you have down at the bottom left and right corner, which will allow you to do a variety of different shortcuts, which is really handy. So if I wanna take out camera, since there's so many other ways of getting to the camera now, and I wanna do open app, and let's say you have a frequently used app. Let's say for me it is Audible. I click done. And now I can quickly get into Audible just by tapping and holding, which is great. All right, so now let's get back into software. So the iPhone 16 models all have Apple intelligence. Unfortunately, not everything is available right now. Some will be coming later, such as visual intelligence that will allow you to use the action button to scan certain things and then your device will tell you all about whatever you scan. And also features like Genmoji that allow you to customize uh, your emojis automatically using text prompts. And then finally, the ChatGBT integration will be coming later as well. Now, unfortunately, this isn't actually ready on new iPhone 16s and won't even be ready for about another month. So I actually upgraded to the iOS 18.1 beta, which is when this will come out. And then I had to request Apple intelligence we can see iOS 18.1 is eventually when you will get Apple intelligence. So there's several cool features with this and a big one is a redesigned Siri. So now when you hold down your power button to launch Siri, you get this full screen look, which is pretty sweet. Now, when you're in an application, you can actually double tap the little button at the bottom and you can type to Siri. So set alarm and you can see a 10 minute timer is there going. Now another feature is in photos. If you click the little icon at the bottom and then you click clean up, you're able to actually eliminate things in your scene. So here I'm just gonna scrub over this car. And you can see, well, <laughs> it attempted to fix that up. So you can see what the final project looks like. It's far from perfect but it's not a terrible job either, I suppose. Uh, and this is something that will continue to get better. So you can see what it originally looked like and it's kind of highlighting the possible changes. And then you can see what it looks like when it's all removed. Now, another cool feature is summarizing. So here I have a morning brew newsletter. I go in and I can click on the summarize button and you can see here is a little bit of a summary of the contents of this email. Now I'm gonna show you another feature. So say I have an email here and uh, yeah, say I got hit by a flying squirrel to my boss, probably not a great email. I'll go ahead and click writing tools and I'll click proofread. <laughs> and you can see it actually rewrote that for me. Now other writing tools include proofreading, so it's gonna look for any errors. And then you can summarize, do key points, turn things into a list, and turn things into a table. Next, I've got a couple other random but cool tips for your iPhone. Now, one feature that I really like is reader mode, which I think is an underrated feature. If you're browsing in Safari and you want a cleaner reading mode, you can actually hold this little icon down here and it will launch reader mode. Now, Apple's website's already very clean, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it'll get rid of all the annoying elements of a website and just give you a very clean reading experience with the images and text. Now you can also see the summarize feature, which is another Apple intelligence feature. So here is that summary that it is giving. One is send later. So if you're sending a text, you can click the plus button and click send later. And then you can choose when you want to send it. And it will send that into the Apple server and then deliver it at the time that you want, which is a sweet feature. Next, you now have the ability to lock apps. So if you hold onto an app, you can require Face ID. So in case you're very sensitive about weather, you can require Face ID to get in. So then you click on that, and it just scan my Face ID to get in. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Okay. Now one of my favorite features of newer iPhones is macro mode, which you can actually utilize basically just by bringing your iPhone close to something and you can just get really great texture shots of things with macro mode on your iPhone, which I think is just awesome. Really get some depth and good detail. And depending on the model, you can even then 
zoom in. So here we've got a 5x zoom, which is kind of crazy. You will need a lot of light for this though, so keep that in mind. And those are the tips and tricks for the iPhone 16, 16 Plus, 16 Pro, and 16 Pro Max. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Leave those down in the comment section below. Make sure to check out ESR Chargers, and thanks so much for watching.